All right guys, this is Bucky with Transit Level Clinic and today I wanted to run through a brief tutorial on how to bring in a uh, base map, uh, more specifically how to bring in a DXF file uh, which would contain line work, etc. Uh, and allow us to use that line work for uh, laying out or surveying uh, or so on. So the very first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open up Survey Pro, which I've done. Uh, we're going to just start a job. We're going to start this, call it project number one, and we're going to use our default settings. So I'm just going to go to create job now. Now back at our main menu, uh, the very first thing I want to do is to go ahead and bring in two control points. We're going to talk about how we can use these control points to orient our drawing uh, later down the road. Uh, so just real quick, we're going to file import. We have a CSV file saved in our computer known as control 030817. We'll bring that in. The default should be five. We'll put it on the points layer and briefly hit finish. And we know those two points came in because we go to job points and we have point number three and point number five. Now there really isn't a main menu, so to say, uh, for bringing in a base map uh, or bringing in like something like a DXF file. Uh, there is one for bringing in something like a digital terrain model. Uh, but here we're not going to be so worried about uh, an actual surface, uh, more worried about line work, whether we're doing uh, a column line in the layout world or we're doing something like edge of pavement or a center line uh, in our surveying world. So we're going to get to this through our map view. Uh, pretty much every one of you has probably used the map view before. This is the default view for that. Uh, right now we can see that we have our two points. Uh, point number three, point number five, that's what we brought in on the import. To the left hand side we have our zoom functionality, so zoom extents in and out uh, to an area and zoom to a point. Uh, many of you may not know, uh, this uh, little piece of paper with a pencil are actually display options. Um, so things that begin to get in the way of your map view, let's say this thing here that says Rogers Monument uh, number three, that description. Let's say we have uh, uh, 5,000 points on this. Obviously these little descriptions are going to get in the way from us uh, really seeing where we are. So we can go into our map display options and we can take those descriptions off. All right, now we just have point three and five. Uh, there's a lot of customization through this. Uh, you can kind of come in here and, and play with it on your own. Uh, we do have a manage layers and a manage base maps uh, button as well. Uh, however, I like getting to that through uh, the next uh, button, which is our add or edit uh, base map menu. So the two pieces of paper with the pencil, we're going to go ahead and click on that. And the first thing it's going to tell us to do is add. Uh, we don't have anything in our list of base maps right now. So we're going to go ahead and add. We have just a building file. Again, this may be a, a road file. If you have something like a, a center line type profile uh, that you want to use. Uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead, we're going to pull up this building 030817. We'll bring that in. And the first thing that it will bring in with this is a menu with four tabs. Now, on the simulator, these tabs aren't the best thing uh, to look at here. Uh, look a little bit more defined on your data collectors. Uh, but your first tab is going to be layers. That's going to be every layer that comes in with that DXF. All right, how many points comes in with that layer? Uh, and how many lines comes in with that layer. Now, briefly, it's pretty important to understand that you are using a mobile device. Uh, so it's going to be important that we narrow down, we block out any information that we don't need uh, to keep the size of this DXF file down. I've uh, seen extremely large DXF files. The data collector may take them, uh, but they certainly won't run them at optimal speed and you're more prone to the equipment crashing and things like that. Uh, my recommendation would be to keep that file under around a three meg limit. Uh, and really when you think about it, um, we are not going to go out there more than likely and stake something on every one of these layers um, in one day. So you can always block those out, bring in the layer you need for the day, uh, use that and then bring in another one uh, later down the road. There are three buttons down here. Uh, it's important to understand what each one of these do. Hide or hide all allows you to hide uh, certain layers. So if you do bring in, let's say, five or six layers, you're only going to use one for the day, but you know that, that file size is still pretty small. We can go in here and we can hide certain layers, 
and under visibility you can click to uh, turn those on and off and things like that. If we hit show, uh, show all uh, is basically using those layers for reference uh, so we can actually see a, what position we're at uh, on top of those lines. Uh, show all does not mean it's selectable. So later down the road, if we want to do something like stake to line, uh, we would not be able to choose the line. Uh, we can see the line again, but we can't choose the line. In order to choose the line in a menu like that, we do have to have selectable all on or selectable for that layer uh, that we are looking to uh, go and stake later. So selectable means that we can actually use it to survey, we can use it to lay out, we can use it for our SNAP2 functionality, et cetera, uh, as we go through our day. Uh, the next tab is general. General is the type of uh, units that you're using for your distance. When you're bringing in the DXF file, we're just using US survey feet. We have a preview. Uh, that preview right now is not uh, zoomable. Right? We can zoom in and out once we get back into our map view. Uh, and then we have an orientation tab. Uh, orientation for the drawing that we have brought in is going to be original. So however we exported it from our AutoCAD package, so how it will come in uh, into our data collector. Uh, if we had some points, let's say we had two points, uh, we know where those are on the drawing, we can come down here to draw map orient to job, and uh, we can select those two points and basically do like a like a manual resection if you would. But we're going to go ahead and leave the defaults on here. Make sure all of our layers are selectable. We'll hit the green check. And now you will see that that DXF file is listed under your Manage Base Maps. All right, so if we get out of here, we come back into our Base Maps. Again, we have uh, that drawing file. Now, there's always a question, can we um, uh, use multiple Base Maps? Uh, and the answer is yes, uh, as long as the file size doesn't exceed you know, that 3 to 5 megabyte range. Uh, if you wanted to bring in something like an aerial photo or even a shape file and you want to use this line work on top of that photo, uh, you can always come in, add, and then you have the option of coming in here and adding something like a, a JPEG or a TIFF file or a, a shape file, things like that. Right, so we can add as many of those as we want to. Um, back in our Manage Base Map screen, uh, you do have some... Uh, uh, editability, I guess, um, back to those four tabs uh, that give you the layers, general preview orientation. Uh, we do have an orient button. So again, if we want to come in and we want to choose two uh, job point files, we can select those two points. Uh, and then we can basically uh, put our mouse cursor on where those two points should be on the drawing. And that will align that drawing for us. Um, my two points are kind of out in... Uh, Never Never Land here, so we're not going to do that uh, for this particular job. So we'll go ahead and X out of the Manage Base Map screen. We'll go back to our map view, and as you can see, our drawings come in. Our points are still here, but now we can zoom in and zoom out. Uh, we can see uh, all of our lines, all of our line work, descriptions that came in with the DXF, shapes, uh, things like that. Now quickly, I do want to go over one thing that I have found uh, very helpful, and that is our uh, SNAP2 functionality. So this little magnet that's down here allows us to place either temporary uh, or stored points on this screen uh, based on the drawing. All right. uh, this is especially important if we just have a drawing file and we know where the physical location of, let's say, uh, the corner of this drawing is, all right, but we don't have a point placed here. All right. Obviously, when we go to Orient, when we go to Backsite, we're going to need a point there uh, to do so. Uh, so we can use these SNAP2 functions to actually place a point uh, here at the end of a line, at the beginning of a line. Uh, we can place them in the middle of a line, at the radius point of a circle, etc. All right. And just a kind of a brief demonstration on how that works, uh, we can hit the little magnet here. Uh, we know that this icon is to the radius point. We have a circle here, so we'll just go ahead and select that. So we're going to add a point to the uh, circle here, click on the circle, and again, we have uh, the little plus mark. So that plus mark is uh, located directly in the center of the circle. All right, It is uh, a temporary point, which is noted, um, number one, by the plus mark, 
And number two, if we had our descriptions turned on, uh, the description would start with the dollar sign. Right? So if you want to see what that looks like, we can go in here, turn our descriptions on, and we have the dollar sign radius point underscore one. Right? Um, we'll turn that back off. Now, why this is important is because in the end, we may put a thousand points on here, all temporary. At the end, we may want those points to disappear. We can come in here, turn off our snap two points. It'll ask us if we want to erase all those temporary points, and we can hit OK, and it's gone. Right? Now, if it's a point that, let's say, we have uh, placed on the radius point, we actually have a nail down on our job. We want to return to that uh, particular point, maybe to use as a back site later. Uh, we can also create a, a point that will store uh, with the rest of the points in our job. So again, using the radius point, we will click the line. We now have a temporary point. Now, if you click down and hold your stylus on that point, uh, it will bring up a little submenu. All right, looks a little bit like this, and uh, you'll have create point here. So we'll hit create point. I like calling any of my created points something different. All right, so the same way I do something like a GPS and a, a total station point, uh, we'll do whatever points we have, you know, that came in with the job or that we imported, and then we'll have our uh, snap two points, maybe starting with a thousand. All right. We'll keep our description just for purposes of the demonstration, and we will hit the green check. When we hit the green check, you should hear the camera. And now we know that we have stored that point uh, in there as point number 1000. Again, looking to the left, we still have our temporary point, all right, but we can go and clear that out. It's gone, and now our permanent point remains. All right, so just to show you how it remains permanent, if we go into our job and our points, we have our two points that we imported, and now point number 1000. All right. Again, Snap2 functionality can really help you, especially in terms of orienting later, um, uh, maybe some kind of verification checks for stakeout, uh, things like that. So another thing that I want to kind of show you guys, uh, and it's kind of off topic a little bit, is uh, Spectre Precision does a very nice job of um, putting in an active user manual. All right? So obviously here we're on our map view. If there's a button over here, because they're all icon based, uh, that you don't know what it does, you always have the ability to hit the little yellow and blue question mark. All right, and that opens up what we call an active user manual. And again, because it's an active user manual, it will open up to the page that you're currently on. So again, this is our map view, and here are all the different things, all the information available uh, for the buttons and the menus on that map view. You'll notice as we go close to the bottom, we have our Snap2 functions. If we were to hit the little hyperlink, uh, these are the definitions of what each of those buttons do. All right, so again, the little symbol right here with the circle and the radius point, snap to the radius point. All right, if we want to come up here and uh, pick on a line that has a little X, snap to the midpoint. Right? Some of these you may use, obviously, uh, as time moves on and you use these more, you'll start to uh, just kind of remember them. You won't have to come back. Uh, but it's always a good idea to know that that active user menu uh, is available on any page. It doesn't matter which menu you're in. Uh, so if you ever get lost, if you ever need to know what's going on or you don't understand what to input, uh, you can always go into something like a stakeout menu. Uh, let's say we don't know what offset staking is. We can go in, question mark, and all the information for our offset staking, uh, as well as any menu that will pop up, right? because we don't have a station set up right now, it's hard to offset stake when there's no uh, back site. All right, so it's also going to give us the link to understand how to input uh, that particular back site. <clears throat> so back to our map view. Again, uh, all of our zoom functions are here. We can now place points. We can use this. Obviously, this is a building, uh, but again, this may be uh, three or five lines, uh, and those three or five lines may be the center line of a road, it may be um, uh, the center line of a walkway, things like that, uh, and we can use those the exact same way that we're doing uh, this right now. Now, if we add a surface to that DXF file, uh, so if we want cut and fills on the fly, uh, and we want to be able to stake to those lines, we would do that in the main menu and then DTM. 
you would need to bring in a uh, DXF file uh, or an XML file that has a surface attached to it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an example that has a surface attached to it here, uh, but it's relatively the same thing. All right? It's just making sure that you're importing, uh, again, a DXF or an XML with a surface attached to it. Um, you'll orient and then you'll be able to uh, state the DTM, calculate the volumes, etc. So finally, I do want to show you guys just uh, uh, one quick uh, application for uh, using these lines, uh, and that would be in our stakeout menu. All right, so we can go to stakeout and we can go to stake to line. Now, obviously, there are a ton of applications where you can use lines, uh, and right now, you guys are probably used to uh, coming in here, defining your line based on a starting point uh, and an ending point or a starting point and a direction, uh, etc. Right? And you can still do that. Uh, but now we have lines. We have lines in our menu. So we'll just come up here and select polyline. Right? And then we'll have uh, two windows here. So we basically have two views. We have the view of the directional line. We have a, a view of the, I guess, the elevation of the line. If we click on either of these boxes, it gives us a preview, all right? So just a preview with uh, uh, zoom ability functions uh, that allows us to go in here and kind of find where we want to be, all right? Again, this is just a preview if you hit uh, one of these two boxes. If we hit tap line though, this gives us the ability to see the same menu, uh, but to be able to tap uh, on a particular line. So let's say we want to stake out uh, this arc here, this curve here. We can come in, we can select that line. It gives us a view of where that line runs. Let's say we want that to reverse. This is the beginning, this is the ending when we go to stake. Let's say we want this to be the beginning and this to be the ending. We can always come in and reverse the line in our menu. Right? This is given our elevation change. Again, this is just a 2D line. Uh, and then we can go to stake. Right? Um, past this menu, past actually selecting the line that we're looking to uh, stake, the one that we're uh, looking to work with, uh, the application uh, is the same as if you were to come in and again just define a line uh, based on two points. Right? So no difference. Uh, and this is going to be in, again, any menu where uh, you have a line that you can select or define. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you're always free to uh, email us at sales, S-A-L-E-S, -E at transitandlevel.com, and it's spelled out. Or you can contact us at the office, 919-467-7782. Uh, we appreciate you watching our video and look forward to helping you in the future.